Hi, it's Lisa. I am excited to share with you a choke cherry recipe, choke cherry syrup that I figured out yesterday. I found some choke cherries in the park recently and I took them home and made syrup out of them. And this is the jar of syrup. It's really tasty. It's super simple. I have no canning supplies. I didn't have to go buy a whole bunch of tools to make it. All I had to do is buy the jar, which I found at Dollar Store. So I will share with you quickly the recipe, and then after that, if you care to see the process, I filmed myself making it. If you just want to have the recipe, I'll go through it now. I'll also write it in the description below, if you're one of those people that are just here for the recipe and not for the show. So I used six cups of choke cherries yesterday. I made a liter. So, the recipe is, um, I use six cups of choke cherries and then six cups of water and you boil it on the stove for half an hour and you kind of squish it down halfway through to get the juices out. Then you strain it and I was not careful to like, like I smushed them all up in like a fine strainer. This is a strainer. I use, you don't need a cheesecloth or anything like that, you just need a fine strainer. Um, then you try to get back your original amount of water that you put in, so six cups, if you don't get six cups you just keep adding water and mixing it into the pulp until you get your six cups of juice. Then you put that back onto the stove in a clean pot and you add half of the amount of sugar that as the juice. So I added three cups of sugar because I had six cups of juice. Then you also have to add three tablespoons of uh, lemon juice or orange juice, some sort of citrus juice to help thicken it better. And then as an option, which I chose to do is I added half a teaspoon of almond extract and it just brought out the flavor of the cherries a little bit better. And then you boil that on the stove so when it's thick enough and you can pour it in your jars. Now, if you're putting it into a jar, you want to sanitize it. Sanitize the jar. So what you do is you dip it in boiling water, the jar, the lid, everything, or you pour boiling water over it, let it sit in the sink for a bit. That's how you sanitize the jar. Then you take the jar and you pour the boiling syrup Fresh from when it's ready, just pour it directly into the jar and close the lid so that the condensation or whatever science happens there, I'm not sure, but you might know, uh, it will seal by itself. And if you are completely new to canning, the way you know how it seals is you press on this and if it has give, you can see this one does, that's not sealed because we opened this yesterday to try it out. You look at this jar, there is no give, it doesn't move at all, it's tight, that means it's sealed. Then you can, uh, then you have to leave it in the fridge overnight for it to completely gel and like that's as thick as it will be. It might be still a little runny if you use it like hot. And how do you know what a choke cherry is? I will insert a little clip here. This is what a choke cherry looks like if you have no idea what I'm talking about when I'm talking about choke cherries. <laughs> and they have a pit in the middle and they are very astringent. They don't taste good by themselves. You have to make things out of them usually. You, there are apparently different, like some red ones, two different varieties. There is a European one that's more in Eastern Canada. In Western Canada, you're getting these black ones most of the time. They're apparent, ac according to this book, they are one of the most common shrubs in Western um, Western Canada, Western Northwestern United States. I don't know. Tell, let me know if you have heard of them and where you're from and if they grow there too. I am from Saskatchewan, Canada. So they are very common here. You can find them in the bush. I like in nature, whatever, to go foraging and get them. I found them in the park, in the city, that you must have planted them 
I'm assuming. I am excited to make this batch today, 14 cups. Um, I think we're going to run to the store and grab some smaller jars so that we can kind of give it out to some of our friends because it is super tasty and you would never guess like you'd get that tasty of a syrup out of choke cherries because they are not that palatable by themselves fresh from the tree. Also, oh yes, the last thing I want to say is I picked cho these choke cherries like it's mid-September right now. So if you're picking them earlier in the year, they might not be as sweet. You might want to add more sugar. Just add your three cups of sugar or whatever half the amount of juice you have is and then taste it. And if it's not sweet enough for you, add some more. But I found mine to be plenty sweet and I saw some recipes adding like one to one sugars. So I would have had to add like double the sugar I added and that is insane to me. I can't under I can't imagine how sweet that must have been. That must be. Anyways, mine tastes really delicious. You can taste the like tart tartiness of the cherries. It's really good. So yeah, if you wanna continue on seeing what I how I did it. So the first stage of the choke cherries is cleaning out the stems and the leaves from them. So I'm gonna dump them on all these pans that I have lined up here and clean them out. So the next step would be to boil the water and the choke cherries together to get the juice out. No. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now we need to put six cups of water. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to take this to the stove. and boil it to get the juices out and the seeds going and all that. So I'll check back in a bit. Okay, now that this is boiling, I have to turn it down and let it simmer for half an hour, cover it with a lid and mash it halfway through. It has been 15 minutes now, so I'm going to try to mash it. I just have this. I don't... Yeah. Hopefully that will work. I don't have any special tools. We'll see. Oof, that smells good. The, the choke chairs were done boiling. I poured them into the sieve. And now I am supposed to squish out the juice and uh, get the six cups back. So I will measure the juice that comes out and then if I don't have the six cups, I have to keep adding to the pulp until I get the six cups of juice back and then I will Put that back on the stove and add sugar and then make it in syrup. I got the juice strained, strained. I had to add about two more cups of water to it to get the six cups back that I originally put in. That was the advice from the recipe I'm following. So now I'm gonna add some sugar. Now, don't mind the background noise, but kids are insanely loud. So they want me to add six cups of sugar to this. I will add three cups and taste it and see for now because I don't want it to be too sweet. I would rather it be like a little tart. 
for my liking. So I'll check what it tastes like. One of the tips at the bottom of the recipe was add half a cup of almond extract to bring out the cherry flavor, which I did. So we will see how that goes. Okay, now I'm on the stage where I'm boiling the juice that I added sugar to, and I also added three tablespoons of lemon juice. Yes, I'm boiling that. That's supposed to come to a boil. Boil. I'm not going to add pectin. It said you could add pectin if you wanted it to be more thick. But from what I've read other places around the internet, it's not needed. It's not even needed if you're trying to make jelly. So I'm just going to leave it how it is. Then I'm also boiling water, just a plain pot of water. I'm trying to bring that to a boil so I can sanitize my jars so that that will be clean. I don't have a canner and I called my mother and she said it should set or the can should seal without having to can it because the jar will be hot from sanitizing it and then putting the hot liquid in it if I seal it right away it should just seal itself because of the heat from the syrup. So I'm going to try that because I don't feel like I need to spend $100 on a whole canning setup for a few jars of choked cherry syrup and that defeats the purpose of what I'm trying to do by, you know, foraging and making things from free food I find around the city. So, so that's what I'm doing now. I have to boil this syrup now until it thickens, uh, which said it could be like half an hour, I think, on the recipe, so we will see it. So now, it's hard to tell on camera, maybe if I move out of the light, the bubbles are starting to get quite shiny, and I think I read when I was making the jam that that was like probably the good stage to take it out. So I think it's probably ready, I'm gonna say. We will see. That made about two jars. So six cups. made two of these jars. They don't mind the mess. This thing makes, these things make a lot of mess too, or I make a lot of mess. What? One of the two. So this is the syrup. And I ended up getting 12 of these tiny jars that we could give away to people if we wanted, if they want to, if we want to show off our new skills. We got this big jar which I think this is 950 milliliters, and then we got two 500 milliliter jars. So, pretty good haul for 20 cups of choke cherries. So, I had a lot of fun with this. I am super excited for all my syrup. I can give some away. I hope you have the luck of finding some choke cherries in your backyards or parks or nature wherever you are and you can make some syrup too because it's delicious thanks for watching i'll see you tomorrow bye